What is up guys, Jack Frost Miner here. I am back with another video and today I'll be showing you how to make custom thumbnails in Photoshop, but this will also work in GIMP or Paint, uh, it's kind of iffy. GIMP's a free pro program, it's pretty much the same thing. I'll have links to GIMP in the description as well as Photoshop. Photoshop does have a 30 day trial though, I'm pretty sure, so you can definitely you know, whip out a ton of thumbnails for a series and then just kind of place them in, um, you know, whenever you need to. But anyways, let's go ahead and get started. So if you want to do new, um, there's there's a few dimensions that are good. Um, 1920 by 1080 is pretty good. You can also do, whoa, whoa, not 1880, no. Uh, 1920 by 1080 is pretty good. You can also do um, 1280 by 720. Which is, you know, I'll do that just for the sake of this video. So, you usually get something that looks like this. Um, my Photoshop is going to be a little different than yours. Um, if you have these grids and you don't want them, just go down into View, um, Extras, and uncheck that. And you should have a plain white thing here. So now the first step that a lot of people want to know how to do is get the logo in. Well, it is simple. All you got to do is, you know, just find one on the internet, copy the image, and bring it into Photoshop. Now, before I go any further, I do want to say um, thumbnails. You are you do need to be partnered, or I think YouTube is just kind of handing them out now. So if you don't have one, um, just kind of wait. Um, if you start picking up on views, I think uh, YouTube kind of decides that. But anyways, now get back to the tutorial here. Um, down in this left section, we do have an area, and this is a little magic wand too or not, excuse me, not magic wand, quick selection tool, and by the way, this is not going to be like a complete tutorial, I'm not going to teach you guys how to use Photoshop, that would take many episodes, so now just kind of select around what you're trying to choose, and then just delete it, and now as you can see, you get this whole thing, now if there's any gaps like this, remember to delete that as well, and you should have a pretty much clean logo, all you got to do is unselect it by uh, hitting the select and just kind of clicking somewhere, and now you have a Minecraft Pocket Edition logo. Now this wasn't in the picture, so I forgot to delete that. So I'll just have to go ahead and delete that real quick. Hold on. Let me just erase it. I think it'll be easier. I think it will be easier. So this is the one step that a lot of people didn't know how to do, and that's how you do it. Oh, by the way, this is on PC. <laughs> if you haven't figured it out yet, not on the phone. Not on a phone. Whoa, I almost subverted that. So, if you don't know how to do this, you pretty much just select um, select your... Whoa, I kind of distorted that a little bit. Select this button up here, and then... And if that doesn't work, hit Control-T, and you'll get a free transform option. You can pretty much just move around anything you like. Um, we'll just say, put it right here for now. Well, that's a little bit off-center. Hold on. Okay, that's looking good. So, this is where a lot of people want their logo, and this is how a lot of people do it. Now from here, um, there's a few things you can do. If you double click on the layer, you, it'll bring you up an options tab where you can kind of change a few things. What I like to do is put a little drop shadow in there, and as you can see, kind of makes it look nicer. You can do bevel and emboss as well, and contour, um, whatever you really prefer. That kind of cleans off the edges. Uh, so I think I'll stick to that. Another cool thing you can do is cover color overlay and make it white, and then and then kind of like dim it down, I don't know, just kind of, it's kind of, some people, I think, do this, some people like it lighter, some people like it darker, so just do what you want with that, I'll just turn that off, another cool thing is texture, if you go into texture, there's a whole lot of textures, um, I think you'll, you'll start out in, like, a, uh, nature pattern, I believe, hold on, let me check, uh, do you, I think you do, you start off somewhere, but if you can, you can kind of change how the patterns look to kind of make it look a little bit more rocky, or a little bit whatever you want so nothing too special with that I mean that's how you kinda do the logo and for this video we'll make the we'll make the thumbnail for this video so next you wanna hit a new layer and in order to make a background um, it's very simple um, there's you can either copy and paste an image off the internet which I'll show you how to do real quick I'm not gonna use this but I'll just show you so I have this image pre pulled up we're gonna go ahead and um, open link in new tab, wait, let's see, how are we going to do this, can we copy this image, copy link address, what, this isn't an ad, this is an image, okay, well, I guess it doesn't like that, so we'll pick a different one, um, no, I'll just copy this image, so I'll copy this, 
bring it into Photoshop, and as you can see, if you paste it, it's going to go on the top. So just drag this layer to the bottom, or above background, whatever you prefer, and you can resize it to fit how you need. Now, you may be thinking it's kind of just too detailed in the background. It kind of looks like it's trying to compete or a little bit, I, I guess you could say. So what I do from here is I go to View, or excuse me, go to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and then you can kind of change it to how blurry you want it. Um, that's a little bit too blurry. Here's a little bit too blurry. So I think around 5 is good for this picture. Obviously, it's going to change. And then you can put your uh, words in or whatever you want. That's not what I'm going to do for this, though. For this, I'm just going to use a simple gradient, which if you hold click on the paint bucket, you'll get a gradient tool here. And this is actually a really cool tool. I don't know why it just didn't work there. Hold on. Opacity. What am I doing wrong here? Let's check. Let's go to a different layer. There we go. I was doing it on the background layer. All right. So as you can see, this is looking pretty cool. But what we want to do is we want to reverse this. By the way, we're in the circle gradient, so this is looking a little bit cooler. But I don't like that. I don't like that. If we go from the middle here, that looks kind of cool. But I don't want it to be too chain. I don't want the color to change too much. So if we go into here, we can spice it up here and just grab this and kind of get it close to the other. Um, whoa, we want it, no, we want it more blue, hold on. Okay, so how about that? Yeah, that's okay. I think it's going to change a little bit, hold on. Hmm, I don't know if I like that. You know what, I'll just stick with, I'll just stick with what I had before. Let's see if we can get back, can we get back there? Yeah, that we can, okay. So I'll just stick with here. I mean, this is a pretty good picture, but I do kind of want to center it a little bit, so I'll center it. You can always change, uh, how it looks. Um, I think... That looks good. That definitely, I like that composition area or whatever you call it. So now we have kind of the basics of what we want. So if you create a new layer, we're going to be working on the text now. So the text pretty much, you just click in the click in the thing and you can pretty much write whatever you want. Um, it's going to have the same colors you have selected up here. So I'll just move it to black. And I'll show you a few different techniques you can use with text. So I'll just write custom thumbnail tutorial. Or custom... Uh, we'll do custom thumbnail, custom, custom thumbnail tutorial, but we don't want, we don't want this font. Um, so if you, if you wonder where I get my fonts from, I'll just whip it up real quick. It is dufffont.com. A link will be below. You can pretty much search anything you want, you know, retro, uh, they have a few cool ones in here, um. Actually, I, I could search through this all day. Old school, which is kind of the same thing as retro, but it's a little bit different. They have a lot of different um, themes, like Asian over here. These are dingbats, which aren't real text, um, I don't believe. Well, if you go to horror, dingbats or whatever. Yeah, these aren't real text, or these aren't real. Um, but you could actually do some cool stuff with these in Photoshop. That's a little bit inappropriate. <laughs> um, Western, they have pretty much... Anything you could need, really. Um, that's actually a really cool font. Holy cow. Let's download that for later. That drift type. That's actually really sick. Um, I'll show you, because you guys probably don't like that. So cartoons actually a pretty popular one. A lot of people go. Dark times. You know, this is just, you know, some pretty cool. Pretty cool stuff. This is where a lot of people get their fonts from. I know I get my fonts from here. So that's what's up with this website. And just to show you around. This is the groovy section. So as you can see, there is a lot of different um, kind of fonts here. There's also parody fonts, so you can find like, uh, you know, Nickelodeon, of course. You can find like Saga fonts, Sega. I don't know. I don't know what the company is. Uh, pretty much find anything. LCD, uh, Sci-Fi, Square, various. Like, it gets pretty intense how cool some of the fonts are. See, Star Wars, Transformers fonts, Batman fonts, Tron's fonts. Um, all that. So anyways, let's go ahead and go back into here. I'll do I'll do thumbnail tutorial. So we will just uh we'll we got to make the font smaller first of uh of course. We will do thumbnail tutorial. Thumb nail tutorial. Now I can't see that, but let's check if I'm good at typing. Yeah, okay, I'm good at typing, but it changed the font. Uh, so let's go ahead and get this all, let's get this all something we like. 
And let's get it all one size, please. 72 for now. What in the world? Okay, we could just leave it like this for now. We want to find a good font. Um, for this one, I'm feeling... I don't know. I'm not feeling anything cartoony, necessarily. Thumbnail tutorial. Well, let's split it up now. Why is it... Why is it doing that? Well, in any case, we can just write thumbnail and then copy and paste and then uh, kind of go from there. So, but I don't like that font. I mean, it's Minecrafty, but I don't like it. I want something. I want something that I feel, you know? You got to feel it on the inside. Thumbnail tutorial. This is actually kind of cool. Thumbnail tutorial. I can see this working. I can see this working. Let's see. Let's see. Oh, I just messed up. Hold on. Ignore that. Um, so now what you want to do is go to the selection tool um, up in the top left. Switch it up here. Go down. We are going to be working. And let's see here. Um, we'll grab this. This is looking centered. Uh, is it a little bit there? Okay. So next thing is another technique that I'm going to show you is if you duplicate this layer, hit OK, and highlight all the text and make it a different color, you can do something pretty cool. If the background's if the background is um, black, then you lift it up. You kind of get this 3D effect, but this isn't really working with this picture. I'm pretty sure we can all agree with that. So if we delete that layer, go ahead and duplicate it again. Um, but this time you're going to bring this down, and this is where you can write your other section of text. So for here, I'll write tutorial, thumbnail tutorial. So here is where I will put this. And I don't like this font. Hold on, we need to fix this, guys. We need to, we need to pick a font that we like. What is a font that I will enjoy? Please. And why is it saying I'm using different fonts? I don't know why it's doing that. What is a font that I'll enjoy? Jungle Fever, um, Rock Solid, Growbold, Thumbnail, Tutorial, no, that's not, I'm not feeling that. It needs to be all caps or all lowercase, I can't just be like that. Thumbnail, Tutorial, no, that's too, too few, see, this is, this is the hardest part of making thumbnails, guys. It's the hardest part of making thumbnails. Thumbnail, Tutorial. No, that's too bubbly. That's too generic. I didn't even mean to click that. Calibre Math. I'm never using a math font in my life. Thumbnail. Tutorial. No, that's too... No. Thumbnail. Tutorial. No. I'm not... You guys gotta feel it. You guys gotta just feel it on the inside. I actually like this one. This is actually sick. Okay, we'll use this one. So if we resize it to look like this, that's going to actually be kind of cool. So now we'll have to go into the other one. We'll go switch this up to the American font, or whatever it's called, American Captain or something. Yeah, I got it right, sweet. And now since this is looking a little bit weird, right, because it's smaller, we're going to go ahead and bump the size up on this a lot bigger than the other one. So, well, not a lot bigger, but it's going to be bigger. Thumbnail tutorial. Well, let's get the size bigger here. It's met, it's it's reading the text really, really weird with the size changers. Thumbnail tutorial. So that's looking good. Now what we want to do is change the way the font has looked. So we we can add a drop uh, thing here, but let's let's do a gradient overlay real quick just so we can see the text better. Um, this is actually a really cool gradient. You can kind of switch them. The way you do that is just uh, mess with the colors down here so you can switch where uh, they actually change or just completely delete it like an idiot. Okay, um, so there I just have one. Another cool thing you can do is add an inner shadow, um, which kind of makes it seem like it's, you know, um, engraved or something. You can add an outer glow, um, inner glow, bevel and emboss, which actually makes it look a little bit 3D, which actually is kind of cool. A texture which we're not going to go too deep in here. Satin, color overlay, and all that. I'll be adding just a small small stroke, just to kind of round it off here, because it kind of looks weird without a stroke. A lot of people don't like stroke. Um, I don't know. 
It kind of depends. Well, you know what? We'll leave it off. And now, if you want this on the other one, you can simply right-click it, copy layer style, go into the other layer, and then paste the layer style. So you get the same thing. But I don't, I'm not liking that. So we're going to go into the gradient overlay, and we're going to make a different gradient. We're going to make this one, but we're going to have this fade into white, shall we? I think that just looks sick. And you can take, take this little dot and kind of move over how high the color actually goes. So we'll do that. And I really want to add a stroke. I'm just, I just got to. I got to. So we'll add a stroke to this one as well. Here we go. And that's pretty much how I do my text. You can always vary it up. Um, I don't want everyone to have the same exact thumbnails as me, but that's looking pretty good. Now, before I go, um, this is kind of be the final one anyway. I'll show you how to save it, and I'll show you how to, I'll also show you how to get pictures in here with backgrounds and other stuff. So, to save it, you just go to save as, and you can save it as uh, PSD. Over here, I have all my files. Um, wow, this is lagging on me hardcore here. There we go. So I'll just go into parts here. And this is where I save all my thumbnails. As you can see, I have a buttload of thumbnails here. Well, no, because I save them in PNGs. So if I switch to PNG, I have a buttload of thumbnails here um, from different videos of mine. We will call it. We will call it this. We will call it thumbnail tutorial dot PNG and PNG or JPEG both work pretty well. Now, just to show you. Um, uh, just to show you how to actually do this, I'll delete the text and I'll show you how to put pictures in here. So if you're willing, if you're wanting to look for a picture, say, just say, let's just do Minecraft. You're looking for a picture. The web page is not available because I do not have an internet connection. So let's say, uh, well, there we go. No, it actually should work now. I just got the internet back. You gonna be, you gonna be cool for this video, internet? There we go. So, say you want to get a picture of, say you're doing a generic little update video, right? Say you're doing an update video, and you want to get a picture of what's coming in the update. So, you want to get a picture of a bucket, because you, you oh, bucker, excuse me, bucket, there we go. So, you, you know, you want to get a picture of a bucket in there. Well, you can go to the image, and it's kind of the same way, you can copy the image, Go ahead, drop it into Photoshop here. And sometimes it has a black background, sometimes it has a white one. It just depends. Do again the same selecting method. And as you can see on this one, it's not going to really work very well. It's kind of hard to explain, but as you can see, it's kind of reading that as the same color. So when I take it off, the bucket's deformed. So I kind of failed on that one. And I don't want to go into um, having to erase manually because that's going to take a little while. And, a lot, and, you know, that's another, that's the second best thing to do. But we'll go into it. We'll go into a different thing. Never forget that. So say you want diamond. Di oh gosh, diamond sword. I don't know. Let's say let's say you want this diamond sword, right? So you're gonna get you need this cool diamond sword here. You can copy the image. Go ahead and drop it down into here. And this is a white background. So the white backgrounds are usually a lot easier to erase. Just kind of just go like this. And boom, there you go. So you have deleted the background. No pixels were selected, which is kind of what I wanted to do here. And then you can move this around. Obviously, it's not very good looking because it wasn't a very good picture in the first place. But that's how you get um, different pictures in here. That was actually a really bad example. So we're just going to do... Oh, gosh, my recorder fell. Okay, so we're going to just do this. We're going to go diamond... Whoops. Diamond... Or, because blocks are usually the best, the easiest thing to demonstrate with. So, as you can see, we have this picture of a block here, right? This is just a, this is just a block here. Come on, mate. Go ahead, load up for me now. There we go. Funnyjunk.com. Nope. Don't want to go to Funny Junk. That's a pretty dumb website. Of course, I go to it again. That's just saddening, isn't it? So, how about this one? Are you going to take me to a, you know, funny junk website here? No, you're not. That's not even a good picture. Come on. Work with me here. Work with me. Are there really no good pictures of just a generic? There you go. Just give me a generic. 
just gonna be generic here. View original image. Thank you. Copy image. Let's paste the image. And the black background doesn't really do too much on here because that will read it as a different color than the block itself. And it will just easily highlight around it. You can delete it and voila. This is the best example I can show you. Pretty easy. Um, if you do still have a little bit of black, as you can see, I have a tiny bit of black down there. And that wasn't in the picture, but at the time. I have a tiny bit of black. You can always go and erase it. But that's how you kind of just get images in here. And you can do the same thing here. You can do drop shadows. You can do, you know, different different effects for it and uh, stuff like that. So thank you guys for watching. I hope this kind of helps you out. And I'll talk to you guys later. Thanks for watching. And as always, stay frosty, my friends. Peace, guys. See ya.